Mark Pokemner is a photojournalist. In the mid-90s, he decided to chronicle the first steps into politics of a young black man in Chicago. In uh, 1995, Barack Obama started to run for political office. He had been a lawyer and he had been a professor at U of C. And um, Hank DeZutter was a writer for The Reader and I did a story about him. And I think it was the first story that was done about him as a, as a uh, um, office-seeking politician. Instead of just going down for an hour and photographing him for the for the uh, one or two pictures that they would run in the paper, I decided to spend a number of days with him. And uh, he was out in the neighborhood in South Shore that he was uh, looking to represent in the state Senate. And I was struck by the way he could talk to everybody on the street. Uh, there are still some little old Jewish ladies who live down there, lots of, lots of black folks, um, older people, younger people, gangbangers, you name it. And uh, he was able to connect with it every one of them on a one-to-one -one basis. So we were walking down this residential street and he, uh, we came across this group of young, young guys uh, who were hanging out and playing ball, I guess. And uh, he went over to the porch that they were on and, and started talking to them. As you can see, they just lit up. You know, they, just, just the attention, just the, the, the obvious, I mean, it, that, that must be the definition of charisma when you can just walk up to people and start talking to them and they, they look like they're plugged into an electric outlet. They can, they're, just, uh, they're just excited to, to, to meet him. And he wasn't a celebrity of any kind at that time. Nobody knew who he was. I think Barack has got, my view is Barack got into politics because of the potential of being able to do the same kind of sort of social good that he did as a lawyer and, and that he did as a community organizer. And the question for him when he was looking to come to practice law, inquiring as to how do you do these things most effectively in government and, and where what roles could he play. We spent a lot of time talking together and, and uh, uh, you know, there was no crush of press. It was just me. So, you know, I, I got to talk to him about uh, the, the things he wanted to do and the things he believed in and, and uh, where he had come from and so forth. And, and definitely, I definitely responded, responded to him and, and uh, hoped that he would go someplace. Of course, you know, both Hank and I said, you know, as, as many other people had said at that time, this guy could be president. You know, and, and, you know, we were just joking at the time, but, you know, he had that quality. He had that quality of being, you know, very personable and also very smart and, um, you know, as far as I could see, uh, you know, a, a real progressive. And in Chicago, when one is black, intellectual, and a progressive, a good place to live is Hyde Park. Hyde Park is a racially diverse neighborhood, an exception for an American city, Hyde Park is the home of the 13th District of the Illinois State Senate, where Barack Obama would take his first run for political office in 1996. Tim Black, teacher and oral historian, has lived in this neighborhood for most of his life. So when Barack comes onto the scene, uh, particularly in a community like Hyde Park, which is a pretty politically sophisticated community, the advantage that he had was the fact that he was not only a very brilliant guy, but a very likable guy, and a guy who could expand his reach beyond just race, and did do so. And because of his own uh, heritage, his own uh, uh, mother, father, so I said, family heritage, and his travels, which he had to make as a child, he had a diverse background in terms of, uh, of uh, people. And because he had never been in the, suffered the same throes of outright racism that most of the rest of us, he could feel freer to do the outreach, and he did. It is an area that might be described as a university community, because it's where the University of Chicago is located, that was traditionally white and yet as the larger black South Side expanded, took on increasing numbers of black residents. Because it is traditionally a middle class community and because it in effect created certain kinds of mechanisms of integration that enabled 
middle-class African-Americans to settle there, but largely excluded working-class African-Americans. To this day, it tends to be racially somewhat integrated, or at least mixed, but economically relatively middle-class. So for Obama, it was a good base politically, and it was also one of the few places where a middle-class African-American can live with his family in close proximity to whites. In 1996, Barack Obama was elected senator for the state of Illinois. It was his first political victory. The Sergeant Shriver National Center on Poverty Law is a center that takes action to end poverty through policy development and impact litigation. John Bowman is the director. I met uh, Senator Obama when he first entered the Illinois Senate in the mid-1990s. He was on the committee in the Senate that handled many of our issues, welfare reform, workforce development, health insurance for people. We engage in advocacy with the legislature, so immediately we were working with Senator Obama because he was on an important committee. And I think it's important for us to recall that when we have a choice between making people uh, be able to raise their families adequately and the interests of businesses that are generally profitable, I think at some point we've got to make a decision on behalf of working families of Illinois. I congratulate Senator Lightford. I urge and I vote. He was willing to work with Republicans. He was willing to work with others who disagreed with him. His method was to sit everybody down in a room and to see, first of all, what you all agree on, and then secondly, whether you can hammer out a compromise that everyone can live with, and then to proceed and get it done. The voting is open. Have all voted who wish. Have all voted who wish. Have all voted who wish. Take the record. On that question, there are 33 members voting yes, 23 members voting no, and the bill is declared passed. Politics in Chicago is very much about getting to know the right people. Obama was very good at this. Uh, uh, when in his organizing days, part of what an organizer does is to figure out that power structure and who those people are, and to take your, your people, your real community members, and go to talk to those people in power. He had the ear of the president of the Senate. It was important because it's the leadership within the chamber that assigns committee chairmanships, uh, that gives you important jobs to do. For example, Obama was given the job of figuring out a compromise on videotaping confessions. By videotaping the police proceedings, you would know whether a confession was a real confession or not, or whether it was the result of brutality. And of course, that was very, very delicate and controversial. He managed to uh, get all of the police groups and the citizen groups and the civil liberties groups to come to an agreement on a compromise. One of the talents that Barack Obama developed during his first years in the Senate was the art of compromise. He was first and above all a pragmatist. But Barack was impatient. One of his biggest political miscalculations was considered to be his 2000 bid against Representative Bobby L. Rush, whose stronghold on the south side of Chicago was overwhelmingly black, democratic, and working class. Frankly, um, it was the wrong race for Barack to run. Running against Rush was not a, I mean, it was fine for him if he wanted to get his political feet wet and it was the wrong office. This was an important race for Obama. If he won, it would give him a national springboard to further launch his career. But Bobby Rush was an incumbent congressman and an icon in the black community. Senator Obama was, was tied to and viewed as being the representative of the middle class, not of poor black people. And Rush had a very strong base among poor African Americans. So it was more of a class thing than a black thing. Bobby Rush, Congressman Bobby Rush, was a Black Panther who I met when we were both 18. Bobby was a, um, a beloved character and leader in that community. Bobby Rush was totally tied into the political machine of Chicago and that it was just going to be impossible to defeat that. Obama would probably tell you himself that he was a little over eager for that one and he learned a lesson from it. 
So far, the one big defeat in Barack Obama's career was his loss to Bobby Rush. Obama was an ambitious young man that didn't spend the 20, 30, 40 years that we've spent and Alice spent in the movement. He doesn't come from us, at least that's the way I feel. Mm -hmm. He doesn't come from the Chicago movement in the historic way. You know, it's, it, there have been steps, and especially there's been a lot of work in electoral politics. There's been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. My grandmother pushed off the sidewalk uh, for supporting the right to vote. Um, and in Tennessee, where I grew up the first uh, 10 years of my life, I remember the bus stations being segregated. I remember when we'd come to Chicago, we'd have to go on the colored side and the colored signs. And when you go downtown in Union City, Tennessee, there was a city cafe and we had to go to the back door. Um, so I'm young enough to remember all of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, remember all of that. Black American history is inscribed in the civil rights movement of the 1960s, a movement symbolized by leaders such as Martin Luther King and Reverend Jesse Jackson. You know, so on the one hand, Obama, he's not someone that we know that would come to these backyard barbecues. But on the other hand, he's a new generation. Mm -hmm. And we're excited about that. I mean, I'm excited. He doesn't have to be of me, you know, or of us. The fact that he, that he benefits from what we did and that he represents us, and we don't really see him as a super opportunist. You know, he's a political, politically savvy guy who had an agenda, and he moved it forward. Following his defeat by Bobby Rush, Obama returned to the Illinois State Senate and waited. 